Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Stormworks. This is part four of my tutorial series on beginning with a new career and building your first boat. This part, we're going to be discussing what a clutch can do for you. Now, a clutch, in case you are not familiar with it, is a sort of interruption between two parts of your drive shaft. It's a very technical way of looking at it, but what it in a way does is act as a sort of breaker switch between this part and that part. So what that means is that your engine can be on without it transferring power to the gearboxes and as such to the propeller. Now with the boat that I currently have it is a bit tricky to try and squeeze in a clutch. So I'm going to um, do my piping a little different. I'm going to make sure that this one goes up. Actually let's get the clutch in first. Let's do that first. Unfortunately, well, is it going to fit? Narrowly. Narrowly going to fit. Ah, we can make that work. Okay, important with a clutch is that you see which part of the power connection this is. Because it has two of them. It has a part A and a power B on the other end. It is critical that you have the right one pointing the right way. The A part always points to the engine. It's the closest part to the engine. Ideally, you could connect it directly to it. And I could do that because, or, well, here, this is how that's going to look. I can do it, if the game will let me. There we go. But the problem is, I won't really have any room for my generator. I could do that here in the back, but that means that if my engine is running and my clutch is engaged, so if my clutch is active, it's acting as a breaker switch, then that means that these gearboxes and the generator behind it are not going to be getting any energy. And ideally, I'd want to be charging my battery thanks to the generator that I just deleted from back here when my engine's running, even if my boat is stationary. Now, if you're not able to follow, don't worry. I'm just going to build it and it's going to become more clear. So I'm going to set up the clutch pointing upwards. I'm then going to have the power from the engine directed to the clutch. Now because my boat is so small, I'm going to have to go through the deck of the boat and direct the pipe downwards again. Let's have a little bit more area where I can do my surgery. Pipe angle, this is going to go directly down again and I can close the deck back up. Now I can have my pipe. Sorry, um, I'm going to remove this part as well. And now I'm going to have my generator down here. So now the power, after it comes from the clutch, is basically going through the deck and coming back down. Now I can connect it back up to the gearbox. If you have a bigger ship, then this is going to be far easier. Far, far easier. Now, make sure everything's connected. Because we did a little bit of surgery, and in case you're doing this with me, you need to remember to hook up the power or it won't work. Another important element is that the clutch, in its logic area, takes a number between 0 and 1. The way that we have it set up, with the A closest to the engine and the B coming out here and then bringing it, the power directly to the, uh, the gearboxes here, means that... If this thing is zero, the clutch is engaged. So if it is zero, it's sending zero power to the engine. If it is pressed to one, that means that the clutch is directly powering or directly sending its power through the pipe to whatever you have it connected to. Could be a gearbox in my case, could be a generator, could be anything else that you might have it on. So in this case, I need to have something that can enable the clutch to go either between 1 and 0. There's a few ways you can do this. You can go with a throttle. So you can have a uh, throttle lever. And the throttle lever is there for a throttle value. You can have that set to your clutch. This means that you would have, for example, two throttle levers next to each other. Which um, works, but is less than ideal. So I'm not going to go with that solution. 
we're going to go with a simple bit of logic. And the way that I'm going to do that is going to be the switch box. This is the numerical switch box. What it does is that it uh, sends an off signal. And that can be one number. If you turn it on, so if you send an on signal to the box, it's going to send out another number. Let's just place it down. This is the switch box. You cannot do anything with it selector wise, but you can hook up a couple of logic points. You can hook up what it needs to send if the signal is on. So if the switch box itself gets an on signal, you can say, hey, this is what I want you to send if it's off. This is the switched value. So it's going to be either the signal that it gets if it's on or if it's off, depending on whether it's getting a signal from the button that we're going to set up at the control panel. I also am going to need two others. That's going to be the constant numbers. Now you don't need to set these up directly next to it. You can have them uh, over there and over there for all I care. But ideally, I always have them close because it is the easiest way to hook them up. Now I have two constant numbers, but if you select those, you can see that both of them currently are nothing. They're both none. That's all right for the moment because I want to have my off signal to be nothing. If this thing is not getting a signal, I don't want the clutch to be active. I want the engine to be able to run and power my generator and search my battery, but not do anything else. But when I press the clutch on, so when I enable the clutch and it sends power up the pipe through the clutch down to the gearboxes, that's when it needs to receive a one signal. So since this is the on part, this one is going to get the number one. This switched value goes directly to your clutch. And this way you can tell it, okay, if you're on, you're going to get a one signal. And one means that the clutch is, in this case, allowing power through. If it's zero, it's not. Now we just need to have a switch signal that can turn this thing on and off. Again, if this is a little tricky, I don't blame you because this took me quite a while to figure out how this works. Rename this thing. Make sure that you have your controls named or you're going to eventually add up or end up with a whole bunch of controls and no way to know what they are. This one is toggle button and it goes to the numerical switch box. Normal state for this button is off. So that means that this thing, the uh, numerical switch box over here, is getting an off signal. And if it is getting an off signal, it's sending a zero, which means to the clutch, nope, you're not sending power. So this thing is not allowing power up and then down and then to the gearbox. If I turn it on, it's going to send the one and the, gearbox, or the uh, clutch goes, all right, now I can send my power. Here's how that works in practice. Keep in mind, hook it up to the electrical power grid because it has happened to me far too many times that I spawn things in, I fuel them up and then I go, huh, why does this need to work? More times than I care to admit, it's because you just forget in all your creative enthusiasm to hook it up to the power grid. Again, bring this thing up and hook that up there. We're full of fuel now, so I can take it back off, overboard, there we go. Now, the whole point of having a clutch is that I can run my engine without me going anywhere. So, you can see that I have an RPM of 12, and before I had a clutch, it just didn't allow me to sit still. But now you can see that there's a little bit of uh, puffs of smoke coming out of the exhaust. I'm also going to be using fuel, but I'm not going anywhere. So if you want your boat to be stationary, but you want your engine on, this is how you do it. Now I'm going to turn on the clutch. You can see that the RPM drops because now it's sending power to the gearboxes and as such to the propeller. If I press it again, the RPM goes up. Now I'm not at full throttle. I'm nowhere near full throttle, so I'm not going to be doing anything. I'm just currently drifting with the remainder of my speed. You can see that there's still an exhaust active Keep in mind though, if you're doing this, you are also going to be using fuel. Although, 
not as much fuel as you normally might. Because now the engine doesn't really have anything that's using its power. So its fuel consumption will also be quite a bit lower. Again, turn the clutch on, put the throttle to full, and now we're going at a decent pace. And as you might have seen in the previous tutorial, I can gear up and go even faster. And by doing this, you can have your um, clutch, you can have your gearbox, and you can have your boat stationary if and when you want it. Now, when would you want that? Um, well, for example, if I have to drop off anybody to the hospital over here and I don't want my boat to turn off, or maybe you have a crew member who's going to keep an eye on the boat or who's going to take a passenger and drop them off. In that case, I might want to have the capacity of keeping the boat running with my other crew member on it while I hop off. And in that case, this can be very handy. There is one thing that you really need to keep in mind about the clutch though. If I'm going to throttle to zero, my clutch is enabled. I'm going to let my engine die intentionally, so I want the RPMs to drop to nothing. I want the engine to just turn off. And that's eventually going to happen. If you have too many gearboxes, the ones that I had down there in the back, and you're asking the engine to spin up while all those gears are engaged, it might, and you have your clutch enabled, that's another key element, you're sending power to the gearboxes, sometimes your engine just will not turn on. I'm again going to, um, going to go with the bike example. It's like getting on your bike and trying to get going on the highest gear possible. It's just very, very hard to do. Now with this boat, because I only have one low gear, I'll be able to do it. And you can see that my RPMs are working. But if you have a boat which has more gearboxes and puts more of a strain on the engine, make sure that if you're turning your engine back on, you do not have your gears enabled. Similarly, trying to switch from um, your standard operation. So let's say that you have, uh, I'm going to enable my clutch or disable my clutch. So the engine is at full RPM. I gear up, it's all of a sudden going to be asking quite a lot of this engine and then I turn on the clutch. This boat can do it. But if you're building bigger boats, then you might find that they're not able to do it. Simply because you're asking the engine to deliver so much power to so much resistance from the propeller, which is currently, well, currently it's going, but normally it would be stopped. That means that you might not be able to do it. Keep that in mind. So. If you have a dead engine, or if your engine has stalled, disable your clutch, disable your gears, then you start your engine, then you enable the clutch with a, let's say, low gear or no gear, and then you can gear up. That's the best way to do it. Again, this is, um, or can be, a little tricky, and I hope I explained it properly, so that you now know how to do this. If you have any questions about it, let me know, because this whole setup with the clutch can be a little tricky. Have any questions? Leave them down below in the comments. Have any requests for a tutorial? Down below in the comments. Please, before you start commenting, hey, how do I do this? Check out the playlist that I have for all the tutorials that I've created for Stormworks down below in the description. There are quite a few tutorials, Storm or Stormwing tutorials up there already. Um, if there's one that you don't see yet, then by all means shoot me a question and I'll try to get that thing built as quickly as possible. Until then, good luck building your boats and again, it's Stormworks, so if you can think it up, there's a very good chance that you can build it. Good luck.